Good morning. I'm Erica Allen. I'm one of the pastors of Horizon Church, and I just want to say thank you so much for joining us this morning for Horizon at Home. We're beginning a new four-part message series, Relationship Reset. What are the four things that God has for us so that we can reset our relationships? I, I'll be honest with you, this this series was born out of this desire in my own life to experience a reset with so many of my relationships, my friendships, my, my marriage, my relationship at, at work and with the people that I work with, and, and even with my family. And I recognize that so many of us bring so many complicated things to a series like this. Our relationships with our friends, we, we bring baggage and all kinds of other things with us this morning. Our relationships with significant others or our lack of a relationship with a significant other makes us bring so many things to a series like this. I recognize that, that the the experience that we had growing up in a family, some of us bring healthy and, and vibrant and joyful um, things with us when we talk about our family of origin. And so many of us bring something very different. We we bring dysfunction and, and abuse and, and just some really, really, really hard stuff. And so I just want to acknowledge that this morning. And I want you to know that the God that, that loves you and that has set up this message series wants you to experience a reset in every single one of your relationships. That doesn't mean that, that God's going to fix everything and make everything perfect, but it does mean that God wants to reset some things in you so that in your relationships you can begin to experience the community, the support, the joy, the health, the love that God has for you. The first thing we're going to focus on this morning it is you. You have probably been telling yourself a story that is, is not helpful for the relationships that you find yourself in. I, I want you all to just take a, take a breath and think about the stories you've told yourself this week. I'm not good enough. I'm not pretty enough. I'm not fast enough. I don't work out enough. I don't I have my stuff together enough. I am not enough. I'm not good. I'm not worthy. I am broken. I'm beyond repair. What is the story that you tell yourself over and over and over again? Because here's the deal. You are going to begin to live that story out in your relationships, in your friendships, in your family relationships, in your significant other relationships, in your marriage, in, in your work relationships, you will begin to live that story out in your relationship with other people. And God wants you to stop telling yourself that story and start telling yourself the story of the new possibility that God has for you. See, as humans, we are hardwired to tell ourselves stories that make us stop where we are. Because if, if we're any amount of safe or comfortable, that will protect us. We don't have to keep moving further. We don't have to keep going into the new possibility that God has for us. We can stop right where we are. We are hardwired to see the bear and stop, and then we miss out on the honey. See, we miss out on the new possibility that God has created for us. And we see the shark, right? And we miss out on the calm and peaceful sea that God has for us. We see a saber-toothed tiger and we miss out on the journey through just amazing mountain wilderness, right? We, we see the pain of the past. The, the pain of the past, and we miss out on the future possibility that God has for us in our relationships. We see the grudge, and we miss out on the beauty of forgiveness. We see the grief, and we miss out on the possibility of healing that God has for us. We see the betrayal, and we miss out on the freedom of trust. We see the hard conversation and we miss out on the beauty of a boundary. We see brokenness and unworthiness and we miss out on the possibility of redemption and restoration. We tell ourselves stories that aren't helping us to experience the reset that God has for us in our relationships. The Bible is full of these stories. 
The Bible is full of stories where people tell themselves something to cause them to stop right where they are. And this Bible is full of the ways, of the, of the new possibilities that God has for every single story. See, there were these people, they were called the Israelites. They were living in Egypt in slavery and oppression. They were literally like locked into this relationship that was oppressive, that, that was demeaning, that, that caused them to believe they were unworthy and not smart. That, that, that caused them to believe they weren't powerful, they weren't strong, they weren't resilient people. And God sent a leader to them. His name was Moses. And God said, and, and God had him say to them, you are a people of new possibility. God wants you to move out of this relationship and into the promised land, into a new possibility. And y'all want to know what happens? These people are like, all right, we're going to do it. We're getting out of this mess. And they find themselves being chased down by an Egyptian army and as they're being chased, they get to this place where they see the Red Sea. And they're like, great, we're stuck between an army that wants us gone and wiped off the face of the earth and a Red Sea where if we move forward, we're going to drown. Great. This is what moving out of a harmful and oppressive relationship does for us. We find ourselves stuck between an army and a sea. We have two possibilities, die or die, right? So we are stuck, we are stopped right where we are. And I want y'all to hear this. If you feel like that in your relationships today, I want you to hear what God did for these people. God split the Red Sea and they walked across on dry land. They walked across on dry land and they were safe and God protected them from the army that was chasing them, from their deepest fears and the pain. God freed them, literally freed them from having to be scared of that anymore. And they walked across the Red Sea on dry land. When they got to a stopping point, God changed the story and had a new possibility for them. If you feel stuck in your relationships this morning, God has a new possibility for you. I want you to hear also about this guy. His name was, was King David. He was a king over this over, over these people, right? They, they grow up and create their own nation. And, and David is the king of these people. And, and David does something really terrible, y'all. He, he gets in this relationship with a woman who's married. It, that she winds up getting pregnant with David's child. And this woman's husband is off fighting for David's country. <laughs> like he's in the army that fights for David's country. And David has him put on the front lines of, of war and he's killed. So he cheats, he, he arranges this love affair and then he arranges for the man uh, of his mistress to be killed in war. And, and David convinces himself he's the most broken and terrible and unworthy human being. And I'll be honest with y'all, like, that's a pretty rotten story. But God had a new thing for David. He says, yes, David, what you did was wrong. And, and David's like, this, this child's going to suffer because of this. This, this woman's life is going to suffer because of this. My life is over because of this. This brokenness that I have created is just, like, this mess is beyond redemption, and God's like, it's, it's pretty messy, it's pretty terrible, but I have a new story for you. And God just does this amazing new work in David's life. He, he creates him to be a dad who cares about people. He, he, he helps him fall in love with the country that he's a king of all over again. And then he uses his pain and his brokenness and his story to begin to cry out to God. He writes these poems that, that are that are captured in the book of Psalms, he writes these stories about just being stuck in, in sort of darkness and brokenness and God opening up new possibilities and giving us new light. He helps people like connect with those feelings of brokenness and unworthiness and he helps connect them to the story of God, a story of new possibilities. If you are stuck in, in, in the story that you've created in your life that is an absolute mess, God has a new story for you and God is ready for you to come honest with that story and to redeem that story, to restore that story, to make that story new so that you can experience a reset in your relationships. David winds up having this best friend named Jonathan and their relationship changes the world because they were able to be really good friends to one another and support and love one another in really hard times. 
God creates David to be this man of honor and integrity through this relationship because God was able to reset his relationship because David could tell himself a different story. I am worthy. I am good. God can use me and my story. If your story has caused you to believe you're unworthy and you're broken, God has a new story for you. God has a new possibility for you, and God wants to use you to create something new and different for the world. There was a woman named Ruth. She lost her husband. She was absolutely devastated, living day to day in just this unbelievable and heavy grief. She was a woman, so she's looked at as this sort of second-class citizen. She was living in a country that was not her own. She moved there to be with her husband, and she's left with one friend. It was her former mother-in-law. She's not even really her mother-in-law now that, now, now that her, her husband has died. Naomi, her mother-in-law, is just absolutely heartbroken. She's lost her husband. She's lost her son. She is just absolutely just stuck in sort of this grief. And because of that past pain, they, they can't figure out how to move forward, but they realize that if they stay where they are, they are literally going to starve to death. That if they continue to live in the place where they are, if they just continue to wallow in their grief, they are literally going to starve to death. There's no possibility for new life for them. And God changes their story. God says, Ruth, take Naomi by the hand. Y'all move somewhere else, and I have a new possibility for you. And Ruth winds up meeting this man named Boaz who provides for her and for Naomi. She, she can experience this, this new life, this new possibility. Her and Naomi experience brighter and more hopeful days because they held on to one another and they, they let go and they moved away from the grief that they were experiencing. That doesn't mean they weren't sad. That doesn't mean they forgot about their husband or their son or the people they loved. But it did mean that when they chose not to wallow in that place of grief, that God had a new possibility of healing for them, redemption for them, restoration for them. God had a reset for them and their relationships, and they began to tell themselves a different story. It, you know, it is worth loving again. Yes, I may experience pain and hurt and grief. Yes, something may happen, but this relationship and every relationship is worth it. It is worth it. Love is worth it. They began to tell themselves a different story because God changed their story. If you're coming this morning absolutely in grief and pain, God is ready to change the story. God is ready for you to, to God is ready to stand with you as you as you love again, as you begin to heal from the grief and pain that you are experiencing. There was a man and a woman who were engaged to be married. And they find out in a dream that they are pregnant. And their names are Mary and Joseph. They are hidden in shame. They are broken and ashamed and they want to hide from the world. They don't want anybody to know this story. And God comes to them in a dream and says, this is unexpected. You're experiencing something that you didn't really ask for, that you didn't really want, but I'm going to use this piece of your story to change the whole story for the whole world. I'm going to use your relationships with one another. You're going to support one another. You're going to encourage one another. You're going to be there for one another. And I'm going to reset the whole world through this relationship that I have with you. If there's some pain or darkness or shame that you are hiding from, God is ready to make that new. God is ready to change the story this morning. God sent his son, Jesus, who looked at story after story after story after story of people who are broken and hurting and sick and lonely and craving something more in the world. And Jesus said, your story can change, your story can change, your story can change, your story can change. And us humans don't know what to do with that. And so we wound up putting him on a cross. And the night before he went to the cross, he was in the garden and he is 100% human. He is 100% he is like us and he is 100% like God. And in that garden, he looks up to God and he says, I'm not strong enough. I'm not courageous enough. I'm not worthy enough. I'm not good enough. I can't do this next thing, God. 
I know I'm your son and I know you want me to, to create these new possibilities for these people, but, but take this cup from me. I cannot do it. And God changed the story. I imagine God's hand being on the back of Jesus as he's anxious and stressed about what's next. And he says, you can do what is coming. I am going to be with you. I am there for you. I will be with you every single step of the way, son. I will never forsake you and I will never leave you. And God loves you that much. If this morning you feel lonely and forsaken, God changed the story. Because even though our brokenness and our shame and our sin and our pain and all of those things put Jesus on a cross, Jesus was able through the power of the Holy Spirit, through God's power himself to raise above the shame, the pain, the grief, the hopelessness, the desperation. And there was a major reset that happened on Easter morning so that people like me and you can begin to experience the deepness that God has for us. God changed the story. And God said, your brokenness, your hopelessness, your pain will not, will not, will not have the last word. I'm ready to reset you. I'm ready to reset the world. I'm ready for everything to reset through the grace of Jesus. Wherever you are this morning, wherever you feel stopped and blocked up, there is a new and beautiful possibility of God's grace to make it all new. There is a reset. There's only one point to today's sermon, and that is begin to live into the story that God has for you. You will never, you will never be able to tell yourself a story that you are worthy enough, that you are good enough, that you are beautiful enough, that, that, that you are a, a good enough whatever for whatever relationship. You will never be able to do that on your, lo- your own. You can only do it through the power of God's grace offered to us through Jesus Christ who offers us all a new story. Story after story after story in this Bible is about a God who changes us and makes us different and makes us new. God is ready to change your story. What is it? What is it that you need to say? I have said this and I believe this about myself too much and I'm ready for you to reset and change my story. What is it? What is that story? What are you focused on? What bear or shark or pain or grudge or betrayal are you stuck on? What brokenness or or unworthiness or or whatever, what is it that you are focused on? And and what new possibility that God has for you, that God has created just for you and for your relationships and for this world through the relationships God has for you? What new possibility are you missing out on because you're focusing on that story that you tell yourself over and over and over and over again? God is ready. God is ready to tell you a different story. I told you the story about about Moses leading the people of Israel out of, of slavery and oppression in Egypt and into the promised land, into a place of freedom and, and new possibilities. And I, I want you to I want you to know this about Moses. Moses grew up with a stuttering problem. His scriptures tell us like he, he didn't speak well. And, and when when God called Moses to this Moses looks at God and says, like, I don't speak real well. What do you mean you, like, want to use me to tell people, like, what to do? Like, I've got to use my mouth. Like, I've got to use my speech. I, like, I've been telling myself all, all my life, like, you're not ever going to be good enough. I imagine the teachers that he had. See, he was, uh, he was actually adopted by the king's daughter. Like, he grew up in royalty. And I imagine the tutors coming and telling him, like, Moses, like, what, why can't you talk right, dude? Like, what's, what's wrong with you? And, and Moses has just, like, kept these stories. He's kept telling these, himself these stories. And just because we tell ourselves a story doesn't make it a fact, right? That, that is not the story that God had for Moses. God had a different story for Moses. Moses, you are a leader. You are called. You are worthy. You are brilliant. You are wise. You are smart. You are chosen. The story that you've told yourself all along, that that story is not a fact. I have a new story for you, and I'm going to reset your relationship with these Hebrew people so that you can lead them to a new place. And Moses does. And then in, in Deuteronomy, when they're, when God is, has gotten the, pe- the people of Israel to a safe place, 
um, that God is, is using the leaders to tell them like what they're supposed to do next. And I want you to listen in Deuteronomy 11, chapter 18, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 18. Sorry, I got all mixed up there. I want you to hear what it is that God says to the people. Like, like Moses, a person who, who's not speaking well, says, says these words. He says, fix these words of mine in your hearts and minds. God is, God, it, Moses is telling the people, like, God has told me to say this to you, to fix the words of God in your hearts and in your minds and tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your forehead. There is going, you are living in a world that is going to tell you stories about yourself that is not true. And, and you are going to tell yourself these stories over and over and over again. You're going to tell yourself, I'm going to fail. This isn't good enough. I, like what might happen if you're going to tell yourself these stories. So you've got to fix these words of mine in your hearts and minds. You've got to tie them as symbols on your hands and you've got to bind them to your forehead. You have got to tell yourself that the story that God has for me is different. It's a story of redemption, of restoration, of new possibility. Teach them to your children. Because if you don't teach this to the children, if you don't teach this to the people around you, they're going to learn a different story about themselves. So teach this story to your children. Teach them the story of God's new possibility for them and for the whole world. Talk to them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates so that your days and the days of your children may be many in the land of the Lord swore to give to your ancestors as many as the days that the heavens are above the earth. Did you hear that? Slap these words everywhere that you can find. Put them on your steering wheel, put them on your house, put them on your wall, put them on your desk, put them on your phone. Put these words of mine everywhere because the world is going to tell you a story that you are going to tell yourself. The human condition is to tell ourselves stories. Whoa, stop, not safe. Let's stop in this mess, in this oppressive mess, and let's not move on to the new possibility that God has for us. And God says, no, <laughs> write down this story. You are loved. You are worthy. Put them everywhere. Tell them to the children. When he says, tell them to your children, it's not just tell them to David, Emma, and Will, my children. It is tell them to all the children. Tell them to the children. Tell this story to the children at BT Washington Elementary. Tell this story to the children at Cher Monte Elementary. Tell this story to the children that, that find food at the Gandhi Civic Center even on this Thursday night, right? Tell this story to the world. You are loved. You are worthy. And that will cause a reset in our relationships because we won't stop at the bear, at the shark, at the saber-toothed tiger. We won't stop at the grudge or the hard conversation or the pain or the grief or the betrayal. We will move into the new possibility that God has for us. We will not stop at the hatred or the anger or the resentment. We will move in to the new possibility that God has for us and for our relationships. Folks, one simple point. If you are ready to reset your relationship, start telling yourself and the world the story that God has for us. You are loved. You are worthy.